Welcome back to the Car Fun Mostly channel. At the weekend we did a endurance race called the Digipalooza at the uh, National Slot Car Centre in Rockingham. And this was our GT3 entry. It was a sideways Lamborghini Huracan. You've probably seen it in another video that I've done. But this is its first post-race analysis. Tear down if you like. And I'll tell you a little bit about how the car went during the race. So, um... The race was split into two 90-minute segments. I believe there were two separate races, but the results were announced as cumulative. I'm not exactly sure why, but we didn't go completely clear through the two races. In the first race, we had some problems with the car, and we ended up stopping it, checking it out thoroughly, repairing it, and sending it for the second race, where we did a solid, a solid race and got a podium position at the end. Uh, one thing that happened to the car during the uh, tech inspection in between the two races is we'd lost a wheel trim insert there. They were both black ones like this or coloured in black and I'd lost one so we had to glue another one of those in. We also had some issues with ground clearance underneath the motor but I'll cover that in a separate video. So as you can probably tell this rear wing isn't the way it's meant to be. One of the regulations is that you must maintain a rear wing on the car and unfortunately this one had seen some action before the event and it's super glued to the body shell. It's a rubber wing, it's a stock item but one leg of that rubber wing let go of the uh, boot lid and it was flailing behind the car with about, I don't know, two or three minutes before the uh, half distance driver change. So we prepared super glue and uh, during the driver changeover we have a one minute mandatory pit stop so that's, that gives time for the driver and the marshal to exchange positions. I managed to get a replacement marshal and I th put a dub of super glue on the boot lid and tried to hold this in place while it set up. Well it took most of the minute and it hadn't set up at all so I spat on it to give it some aqueous solution shall we say, which helps to set super glue. And we sent it out about 20 to 30 seconds late in the second pit stop. That was during the first race. And it's now post second race. So we'll take a look around and see what we can find. First of all, I'm gonna look, take a close look at the braid. The braid stayed in quite good condition. It's tinned braid and it's just beginning to go coppery at the front edge they're still laying reasonably flat they're not bent up and twisted um, they were flattened in between races marginally just by thumb pressure like this um, one change that we made during qualifying was to put some sticky tape on the motor pod here this was to control somewhat the pod motion in the car particularly the roll motion it was a handling adjustment really. Um, we found that when the car got to the limit and swung the tail out, it would go pretty big and pretty violently. That was the only descriptions I can use. And when we did this additional little bit of taping here, we found that the car would stay flatter. It would look a little bit flatter in the, tr in the turn. It would handle a little bit more consistently and when it let go, it didn't let go in such a violent fashion. Uh, so we left it on and ran like that. We actually had a piece that went all the way across here at one point during the race, uh, during the qualifying. But we removed that to aid in the height of the motor from the track. Anyhow, we'll remove the body shell and see if there's anything else inside that's telling us a story. Oh, the Tipex marks. They're all still there. None of it's absolutely worn off. I think that one might have touched the track a little during the race. That one a little less. There's a little bit of dirt on the face of the Tipex. That one's still there. And most of that one is gone. But this is done two 90 minute races plus practice plus qualifying 
so I'm not I'm going to say that they weren't touching it wasn't touching the track too much at all I'm not too concerned if it does touch the track in the odd spot if there's a high spot on the track on the circuit you certainly don't need to set up just to clear that one spot okay so body screw out there and that one's not going to fall out because of the guide so in the first 90 minute race we had a lights failure and that needs to be repaired ASAP during green flag running and when I took the body shell off I discovered that the lighting chip here was not attached to the chassis now I'd fixed that with some with three one millimeter thick double-sided tape squares these squares are Ooh, you can see the edge of one here perhaps they are probably I'm gonna guess far not guess I'm gonna use my mind measure about five millimeters square and those when I went inside and I found this thing dancing around still attached to this plug but it wasn't at all attached to these wires coming from the power supply um, I had two solder joints to do one on this corner and one on this corner both wires remain attached to the chassis just there in a small blob of glue so what I did about it was resoldered and I refitted with three thicker sticky back pads and they are failing or this one is anyway investigate a little further so two of the three have continued to hold and they were holding pretty good yeah and the quick fix was if we look the white ones were the one millimeter thick ones the black ones two millimeters thick And the white ones had, well, had they come off the chassis? There's a piece of the white one left on there. Looks like the paper tape in between the sticky pads had actually split. That was my feeling when I did the repair anyway. Yeah, that one's definitely split. I don't know where the rest is. I might have rubbed it off. Needless to say, I used some two millimeter thick ones like this and that got us through the next, well, second half of the race and the remaining 90 minutes. We've got the usual tire debris, marbles stuck to anything that they will stick to, um, still in there. Nowhere on the gears that I can identify with the naked eye. Everything's still in place. The whole sensor here is held secure. The digital chip, which is mounted on the same black sticky squares, has stayed in. No scratches from the track on the motor. That's obviously never struck the rails anywhere. One thing that did happen between the races, uh, because of the ground clearance regulation, I was forced to fit a second pair of rear tyres. Most teams would do that, I think. And I noticed that when I put the new tyre on this wheel left the wheel in exactly the same place that we started the second 90 minutes with the edge of the tyre touching the face of the pinion gear here but only in a certain spot as it rotated oh look we've got the tiniest little bit of end float in the axle more than I would have set it up with in the first place I wonder why 
I wonder if we've got some wear on a shim either here or here. Well, this one's metal. Yes, it's got a little more end float than I think I set it with. But I noticed that we got the edge of the tyre on the face of the pinion gear. And if we look at this edge of this tyre, we can see that the pinion has worn a little chamfer on that side of that wheel. So why that happened, I have no idea unless the tyre then the second tyre we fitted to this corner was different to the first because there's enough room here to have pushed this pinion further onto the motor shaft either that or the motor has gained end float no it hasn't it doesn't move needless to say I knew I was starting I wasn't allowed to change this but because uh, the car's in park for me after all um, we ran, started the second race in the, with a little bit of t t tightness here, a little bit of friction, and I could feel it in the way that the car was rolling or not rolling. But even now, if I push on that one, there's no binding because it's taken the edge off the tyre. Obviously, it improved during the race. Good enough for third position. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you may have noticed that the guide in the first video had a kind of brown colour, and that's because I had it got I'd got it wrapped in Kapton tape. I'm be beginning to come to the conclusion that Kapton tape's pretty good in friction. I've seen guides on wood track that are wrapped in Kapton tape, and they last. And I thought I'd try that just to minimize the wear and tear on me guide but what we noticed during practice was that there were certain places just certain track pieces in certain lanes around the lap that would uh, if you were running slowly enough they would the guide would jam in there and the captain tape began to get damaged so I uh, removed it and my guide is 1.6 millimetres thick, 1.59. That's interesting. That being the SICH10. I don't think there's any additional guide wobble. Very, very good. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a little tiny bit more than there was at the start. But that's to be expected. Uh, light wiring all still attached to the body shell where it was I do however have the feeling that eight wires coming down into two in this area here is a little bit stiff um, I felt as though it was pushing the body shell a little and it wouldn't, wouldn't dance quite as easily as I wanted it to. Something I couldn't necessarily change during preparation. Marbles everywhere. Tipex up here. No touch. And Tipex up here. Obviously also not touch the body shell. Not touch the wheels. We lost a little grill. There's a little grill in the back of this front arch just here. And in this side, it's gone. And I noticed it because it fell out of the car when I took the body shell off. And rather than refit it and glue it back into place, I put this little piece of blue tack to get the body shell back up to the minimum weight limit. That's all worked properly. And the grill is in my pits box. And there we are. I think that's a complete post-race look over. Um, apart from this failure with the double-sided tape and the issue we had with the rear wing, she ran pretty well. The quick laps were relatively quick. Uh, myself and my teammate probably just weren't quite good enough as drivers to get further up the standings. 
but a third position in the second race, well, we were quite pleased with that, especially considering that my teammates are rookie with regard to slot car racing. So, yeah, he was on a steep learning curve. I'll tell you more about that when we take a look at the uh, LMP car that we raced in the six-hour Enduro on Sunday. For now, thanks for joining me. I hope you found something in there of interest. And remember to like the video if you liked it so that a lot of the like-minded people can find it. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks very much.